worst first date I've ever been on. Sorry. Guess escape rooms aren't for everybody. Wait, escape room? You seriously think this is like one of those team building exercises? Like that people pay money for? Yeah, this one's super expensive. They took my whole wallet. This is real. This is pretty real. Very authentic. Why are you smiling right now? They kicked you in the face. Well, sometimes people just really get into character. Oh, come on, this is fun. I should have swiped left, I should have swiped so, left. So, your chair looks pretty old, and I think if I kick it, I can break the leg Wait, out from no, underneath no, it. Don't, I don't, get us out of here. No, 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 hang on. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Are you serious? It almost broke. All right, I got it this time. I got no, it this time. Seriously, stop. We got it, we got it, we got it. music do you like? <laughs> I love that face. Hey everyone, how's it going? This is Todd with Premium Beat, and what was that? Well, if you head over to Rocketstock.com, you'll see that they've been putting out a lot of great action-oriented video element packs, and what we wanted to do was just take all those elements and use as many as we could in one short film. So if you haven't already, go check out these packs. There's all kinds of different stuff to choose from. You've got explosions, fire, smoke, muzzle flashes. All of these things were shot in 6K with a red Epic camera and they're super high quality. We wanted to just use as many as we could in one short film and basically show you guys how we did it. And if you keep an eye on this channel, we might go ahead and give away some free samples of these elements as well so that you can get started yourself. Wait. Okay, that's but we got a lot of great content centered around the short coming at you. Uh, we're going to show you kind of how we lit it and shot it. I'm going to do a whole breakdown and show you guys how to do that explosion at the end and how we use the rocket stock elements to pull that off. So escape room. We had one night to shoot it. We wanted to do quite a few different little effects shots, things like that. And we did some pretty cool compositing stuff. And I wanted to walk you through some of that. No, no, no. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So we had the shot that we knew we wanted him to kick her into the barrels and I knew that I wanted it to look really, really silly. I wanted it to look super ridiculous. Uh, like he kicks her and she just goes flying like crazy into the barrels. Sorry, I, I, can't, I can't leave that up. I gotta take that down. So what we ended up doing was actually uh, saving her the trouble of flying into these big heavy metal barrels and we did them as three separate plates. So we had one plate that was actually just an empty scene. It was nothing, no actors, no chairs. And that way I knew I'd always have something that I could back out to if something wasn't working or you know, if the, the placement of the actors wasn't just right or his legs weren't kicking far enough. I knew that if all I'd have to do is just rotoscope them out and move them around however I wanted to in the frame. Then we were able to shoot another plate, which was just basically the kick itself. So <laughs> that's pretty funny looking. And then the last plate we shot was just her kind of throwing herself onto a big cushy air mattress with a bunch of blankets on it. So it was super comfy. So basically all I ended up having to do because everything actually lined up pretty well, I basically just masked her out using the pin tool. So right there you see I drew a shape around her and using the mask path, I basically just keyframed it and animated that mask across the shot. And basically from there I just put him kicking underneath and everything worked out right but I also still just if I needed it I had the background plate just in case if I wanted to move things around in the scene and things like that I had that option it was one of those great moments where basically I got the exact look that I was hoping to get 
It looks as goofy as I wanted it to be and nobody got hurt. So that's always good. And there's another shot right there where she hits the barrels. And that's another shot where I knew I wanted it. I wanted the whole thing to just feel very cartoony. And in this shot, there's actually a little continuity error. Uh, if you guys can spot it, put it in the comments. I'm curious if anyone notices. But here's a shot right here. And basically to pull that off, it's the same concept. I shot one plate, which was basically uh, two people on either side of those two barrels. And they just yanked them down as hard as they could. Hit it. And so what I did was I went in and I cut each barrel out and frame by frame animated the mask to basically move with the barrels as they fell so that I could put her behind it. Again, it's a really quick shot, but it just kind of sells the comedy of that moment. It looks really nice and cartoony and fun. And so we had this shot as well where we wanted him to hit his head on the barrel and he knocks off the gun. And obviously there, we were trying to think of a bunch of different ways that we could do this without him actually hurting his face. And, um, you know, then Mike basically just said, uh, you know what, I'm, I'll just I'll just do it. I'll just hit my face on the barrel. I think right there you can kind of see how he feels about that decision. I think that's right there. It's the moment where he starts to regret it. Obviously, we have this timer, you know, on this bomb that's tied to this barrel and the whole time it's constantly ticking down. Basically, the timer itself in real life, uh, you had to start it at two minutes and it took a minute, you know, a while to set up and we didn't want to shoot it where, you know, basically we had to, you know, time it perfectly. So what I did was I just took this one shot of the timer itself, just basically counting down. So if you look at the shot right here, the way that it was originally shot, it just says zero, 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 zero. So how do we fix that? Well, basically you just take the plate that you shot of just the timer itself and we'll drag that to a new composition. You just go to this little button right here that says region of interest. And what you'll do is just kind of select a box around that. So something like that looks okay. And then I'm gonna to go to composition and I'm gonna select crop comp to region of interest. And so that's just gonna basically crop everything down to that little size there. And what we wanna do is just make the timer part itself kind of fill the whole composition. So I'm gonna select the timer element, I'm gonna hit R for rotation, and I'm gonna hit S for scale, and we're just gonna kind of get it as close as we can. So I'm gonna rotate a little bit and just kind of get it flattened out. And let's kind of just drag it around, try to get it centered in that shot. And holding down command, I'm gonna slowly scale this up. This is good. There's a little bit too much stuff on the top and bottom. So I'm gonna go back to the region of interest tool and just kind of crop that down a little bit. And there we go. So now we have the timer isolated on its own. So here in this shot, we have, she turns around and looks and it rack focuses over to the timer. So we're gonna have to deal with that in a little bit, but let's just take the timer that we have here and we'll just name that timer and I'm gonna drag that into the composition and now we have this real small little time element. What we need to do is actually track the timer so that as the shot moves, you know, obviously it'll look natural. So I'm gonna right click on our footage here. I'm gonna go to pre-compose and we're going to make sure that move all attributes is selected. And so now we're gonna go and make sure that our tracker is open. So we're gonna go to window and select tracker and it's gonna pop up down here in the bottom right, depending on your uh, layout. I'm gonna just make a new null object. So right click down here in this little gray area and go to new and select null object. And now let's just go to edit target, make sure we select our null. Let's go to options in the tracker here and let's make sure that this dropdown is set to stop tracking. I like that way better. Usually it's set to adapt feature. Stop tracking is my favorite way to do that. What it does is it stops tracking uh, when things start moving around a lot, it, it doesn't try to guess at what the thing you're trying to track is. And so for confidence level, let's just set uh, 90%. So that means if the if After Effects is less than 90% positive that it's tracking the right thing, it's going to stop tracking. So hit OK. And with our track here, we want to make sure that position and rotation are selected. And so let's just go and kind of find, so we're at the beginning here and it's out of focus but we're gonna still look for some areas of contrast to track here. So this bright little red light is gonna be perfect. I'm gonna scale up and just snag that bad boy. And then down here, I like this out of focus sort of uh, shiny part. It's rack focusing, so we're gonna have to just kind of make sure and keep track of that track. Keep track of that track. 
All right, I'm gonna go ahead and hit the analyze forward button right here. So here we go. We've got our first stop. So let's just kind of make sure, yeah, we're still tracking the middle of this point. Let's go ahead and hit analyze forward again. We're still in good shape. Let's just keep going. And it looks like we have our whole track now. So let's go ahead and hit apply and it's gonna apply it to the null that we created. Let's turn our timer back on and just put it on top of where the timer is. And let's take our timer and parent it to our null. So just grab this little parent tool here and let's turn on motion blur for that layer. So make sure that this little button right here is checked and we're gonna hit this one as well. Let's go to effect and select distort and select corner pin. And so now we have these four little nodes that we can move around and kind of match the perspective of the timer in the scene. So I'm gonna just drag that kind of right about there. And for this one, let's put it kind of in this top corner and see how it kind of warps and gives you this sort of perspective change. That looks natural to my eye. First, I wanna color match the timer element to the shot. So what we need to do is just grab our timer here and I'm gonna go up to effect and select color correction curves. I think actually someone was standing in front of one of the lights so it's a little bit darker. And so what I'm going to do is just take the shadows here and brighten that up till it kind of matches the background. And so right there it's starting to blend in pretty good for me. So that looks good and so now I'm going to go and start working on this sort of rack focus. So obviously that looks really goofy if you leave it that way. So I'm going to select the timer and we're going to go to effect blur and sharpen and we're going to select a camera lens blur and so right as the rack focus begins which is kind of right about there i'm going to go to our camera lens blur and we're going to set it to something that looks natural right about there looks good so that's at about 31 let's just bring it down to about 29 and i'm going to go and start the stopwatch right there so we'll click there and then let's go to where the rack focus ends I'd say right there is where it ends. So I'm gonna go up here and we're gonna turn that down to zero. So what we've done is we've created some keyframes for the camera lens blur. And so that's how we did every single shot that had the timer in it. We just went in in post and added that plate back to the shot. So there are just a few ways, you know, if you, if you plan ahead and you know, you have some shots that you're kind of worried about, you know, someone getting hurt. Uh, it's, it's always best to just figure out some way to shoot uh, different plates and maybe composite things together. It's always nice to come up with the game plan ahead of time uh, and just know basically how you're going to approach shots like this. So stay tuned for some more content about the short. Uh, I'm going to do a whole tutorial about the, the whole kind of explosion uh, breakdown at the end and how I pulled that off. So keep an eye out for that stuff. It's going to be super cool. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.